He's counting us in. This song is for Anita. Thank you. 
just a closer walk with these. Just sing along with us. Just a closer walk with these. Granted, Jesus is my plea. A day. she may not. So uh, this is Catherine, my very shy friend. And Catherine and I want to welcome you this morning to First Christian Church in Washington, North Carolina. If you are watching us online or you are here visiting with us, 
we would remind you that we are part of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. We here at First Christian like to say that we're a movement for love, for love in a fragmented world. And we are so glad to look out and to see all of you with us this morning. It's fun to be back in the fellowship hall. We're making uh, that move this month, and we are glad you're here to worship with us, and we just welcome you into the love of God. We will start with our praise and worship. Will you stand as you are able? Thirst no more. 
may be seated. I'm back again. I forgot to share something with you. I was so overwhelmed with my partner that I forgot to point out to you that we, ha we are not playing Back to the Future today. It is not March the 17th, and we are not going to the sanctuary at the end of the service. Somewhere between the proofing, because it was proofed, somewhere between the proofing and the printing, the computer decided to play a trick on us. So just know that uh, we are in May, and we are in here, and we will stay in here for the whole service. Heavenly Father, as we gather together today, we're reminded of your commandment to love one another as you have loved us. We thank you for the love you have shown us, and we pray that you help us extend that love to our community and beyond. We pray for those who are newly added to our prayer list, that they may feel your presence and experience your healing touch in their lives. Grant them strength, comfort, and hope in their time of need. Lift up college campuses around the world asking for your guidance and protection over the students, faculty, and staff. May these institutions be places of learning, growth, and safety for all who enter their gates. For places and nations of unrest in our world, we ask for your peace to prevail. Bring an end to violence and conflict and help us to work together for justice and reconciliation. We also pray for those, pray for those experiencing natural disasters, especially those affected by tornadoes. Comfort those who have lost loved ones, provide strength to those who are injured, and give hope to those who have lost homes and livelihoods. Give us the strength and willingness to serve those in our community, meeting people where they are, and offering what we have. May we extend your grace as freely as it has been given to us. Lord, we also pray for the many challenges and opportunities that lie ahead for our own community and beyond. Grant us wisdom, courage, and compassion as we navigate the unknown. Help us to be beacons of your light, sharing your love and grace wherever we go. We ask all this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For These moments of wisdom, I don't know how wise this one's going to be, but y'all will try. How's that sound? So I have this bucket. It will put weight on you, I admit it. But I have lots to choose from in my bucket. So Fred, choose one. Really, choose one. <laughs> Good job. Let's see who else is going to be. Oh, Susie, <laughs> choose one. Why'd you choose that one? I like the color. She likes the color. Oh, see, I'm actually trying to get my extra steps in. Go for it. Choose one. Why'd you choose that one? Because it's orange, and I like orange. And it matches your outfit. Oh, look at this. Now, some people, I'm just going to walk right on by. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna slight them. Mm -hmm. Who should, oh, Glenn, choose one. Oh, he's gonna close his eyes. And he actually got a mystery dum-dum. Go figure. So, when I do this with the little kids, it's amazing because you know the color they go after first is red. All the time they go after the red. 
And I'm the one who always chooses the butterscotch or the green because nobody wants those. So I asked why you chose it, and there was a reason why you chose it. But today's scripture gives us a hint about who Jesus is. Jesus doesn't choose one over another because it's his favorite color or his favorite flavor. He doesn't play that way. He actually levels the playing field. And he says, not master, not servant, but friend. All of us, equal. So he then goes one step further, and I think it's verse 16, and he says, I choose you. He chose you and me. He chooses every one of these dum-dums in the bowl. <laughs> None get left out. It wasn't that appropriate. <laughs> so nobody is a favorite and nobody gets left out. And all of these are equal and everyone is loved. So remember that the next time you're asked to choose. Choose them all. And now we're going to sing a song about the gift of God's love, and I invite you all to join in singing the gift of love. Join your voices together as one. As we gather at this table this morning, I'm reminded that next Sunday is a special Sunday. Mother's Day. That's right. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. And one of the things that makes it so special for um, First Christian Church is not only the fact that it's Mother's Day, but that you have a very special booklet that you put out each year that honors women. Uh, you don't have to be a mother to be honored in this book. It honors women, and you're invited to turn those names in. I think today is the last day uh, to do that. It's a dollar a name to put it in there. But the wonderful thing is, like so many things you do, 
this way of acknowledging people you love also goes beyond this church and into the community because the money that you raise from honoring the significant women in your life goes for the youth to buy school supplies that then helps children in this community. So once again, you are showing your love by participating in an offering as a way to bless the community. As always, when we take our offerings at this church, they not only support this facility, which we could not have ministry without, but they go beyond our walls and reach into our community. So don't forget today to leave your blessings in the baskets and in the bowls that are at the doors. And also a reminder that now that we're back in here, you may put your prayer concerns on the cross and you may light candles as you gather for communion. Are we, I don't see candles. There. Oh, they're moved. They moved. The last time, so there are candles up here if you would like to uh, light candles. Uh, today when I'm thinking about communion, I'm thinking about the fact that Jesus does talk to his disciples, those who are following him, and he reminds them, he doesn't remind them, he tells them, you are friends. He levels the table, as Jillian says, and it's at that last meal, he's already told them before in this scripture, you're not my servant, I am not your master, you are not a slave, you are my friend. That puts us on equal plane. Wow, imagine that. Jesus says to his disciple, you are my friend. So it is with his friends that he gathers in the upper room. And while he is with his friends there in that upper room, he takes the bread that is there, he blesses it, he breaks it, he gives it to them. And he said, whenever you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me, your friend. And after supper, he takes the cup and he lifts the cup up and he tells them, this is a reminder of the new commandment that I leave with you, that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Whenever you eat this bread or drink from this cup, you do this in remembrance of me, your friend. Today you're invited, as always, to participate in communion. There are trays with our regular uh, little cups and the um, wafers on them, or if you would like to come for intention, you are invited to do so as we do so here. So let us come together to enjoy and celebrate together this table that Jesus has set for us.
Jesus, friend of sinners, we have strayed so far away. We cut down people in your name, but the sword was never ours to swing. And Jesus, friend of sinners, the truth's become so hard to see. Looking around but never looking up, so double minded. A play God sing with dirty hands and a heart divided. Oh Jesus, a friend of sinners, open our eyes to the world at the end of our pointing face.
Our scripture lesson this morning does come from the Gospel of John. It is the lectionary reading for the day. It comes from the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. If you would like to stand for the reading, you are welcome to do so. There is no expectation that you do so. Do as you feel comfortable. Here begins the reading of the Holy Scripture. Listen for the word of God. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You do not choose me, but I choose you. And I appointed you to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. Here ends the reading of the Holy Scripture. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in prayer? God of uncomprehensible love, may the words from my mouth, may the meditations placed in our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. We've spent a lot of time in the Gospel of John, so I'm not going to go through the Gospel of John because we've done that several times. You already know it was the last one written. You already know it's the only one that's not a synoptic. Uh, You already know that John has a big emphasis upon love and also that John takes us back to the creation story so that we see this relationship with Jesus as like a new creation and is circled around the theme of love. I would share with you that this particular passage is part of what's known the farewell address. And as you may or may not know, today is the last Sunday in the season of Easter. So we have been observing Easter every Sunday. I think this is the sixth one maybe. But until Pentecost comes every year between Easter Sunday and Pentecost, we are in the season of Easter. It's not a single day. And every Sunday is a reclaiming of the Easter promise. And we have been reclaiming love week after week after week in this process because John particularly has focused us in that direction. In fact, I said to Jillian and to Beth this week as we were talking and we were working on this week's worship, I'm like, it's love. It's love. It's just love. And really and truly, there is no other message than love. There just isn't any other message. And how do you say 52 Sundays over Mother's Day is my 40th anniversary of my ordination for 40 years. How do you preach a different sermon on love every single Sunday? Because it's all love. It all comes down to love. It's Jesus' whole message. It's the whole kit and caboodle. And the thing that stuck out for me this time in this passage this year for the first time was that phrase in there when Jesus says, I call you friends. Wow. I call you friends. Because what do we know about our friends? You know, when we're in the work world, we have a boss, and then maybe we work for the boss. Or maybe we are the boss, and people work for us. 
When we are in school, we have a teacher and we're a student. Or maybe we're the student, we're the, the, there's a student and a teacher. But there's a hierarchy to every relationship we have in this world except with our friends. Our friends are on even playing. Our friends are equal. They're not above us. They're not below us. No matter what happens in their life, we support them. We don't always agree with them, but we support them. We love them. They are our friends. We are not better than them. We are not worse than them. We are on an even plane. And Jesus said this to the disciples. I call you my friends on even plane. And so after that kind of struck me this week as something I had never really focused on before, I got to thinking about those disciples. And I thought, well, who are they anyway? We really don't hear much about them. In fact, what we know about them is very limited, isn't it? You could probably help me. You can probably help me with some things I can't remember. So I thought, what is it that we know about these guys? We know they're guys mm -hmm. in the gospel. Now, there are some stories and some understandings that there were probably some women, women who followed. But for the most part, we know that there were these 12 guys, right? Maybe Mary Magdalene and a couple of women followed along. And we know that four of them were fishermen. Okay, so they're kind of, kind of fisher people. And uh, we know that you think they all agreed on exactly the right bait and everything? No. I kind of doubt it. Don't you know in the fishermen I know? I'm thinking, hmm. And we don't, know whether, we don't know whether they knew each other. We know a couple of them are brothers. So... Who knows what kind of relationship they had. Uh, we do know that the two brothers were the ones who were vying for Jesus to see if they couldn't get the place best, best seat next to him. So I'm not sure how everybody else felt about that, the other ten. Um, my guess is it wasn't like, you go, John. <laughs> yeah. Right? In fact, and sometimes we hear Jesus say, uh, and they were arguing along the way. You know, we know one of them was a tax collector. Well, nobody liked ta tax collectors. We still don't, right? <laughs> Nothing's changed. So I got to thinking about these guys, and I thought, you know what? I bet they all had kind of a rocky relationship. They didn't know each other before this journey started. They didn't say, hey, come on, friends, let's go follow this guy. Jesus picked out different ones of them along the way, and they had different personalities. We know one of them sometimes was missing from meetings. We don't know whether he was getting pizza or what, right? Remember Thomas? <laughs> we know that sometimes he's not around. We know John is notorious for saying, uh, not John, Peter. We know that Peter is notorious for saying the wrong thing and the right thing. Know anybody like that who can manage to say both? So I got to thinking about this, and I thought, you know, I bet they were a pretty diverse group. I bet they didn't always get along, and I bet they didn't think alike. In fact, when Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? Only one of them speaks up. So apparently 11 of them are still trying to figure it out. We're like that sometimes too, aren't we? They're quite a diverse group. And that got me thinking about this group. Because one of the things that I have to say about you is you're the largest congregation that I have served and you're the di most diverse congregation I've ever served. You cover the whole spectrum. And that's a great thing. Amen. That is not a bad thing. That is a great thing. I want you to celebrate that that you cover the spectrum. And yet Jesus called all these people, all these people who were so diverse, he called them friends. And not only did he call them friends, but he said, you're my friends and I love you and God loves you and you just like you are are enough. You're enough. Matthew the tax collector, you're enough. Amen. At the time that Jesus is speaking, Judas is there. 
Judas, you're enough. He didn't say, I call you friends except Judas. Get out. <laughs> right? Amen. He said, I call you friends. Amongst this whole diverse, and he says to each one of them, I love you and my Father loves you with all of your diversity and all your difference and all your different theologies. You don't even know the answer to who am I. It's okay. I call you friends. Now, that made me want to do some more research. And I happened to be followed. To, there's someone that I happen to really like to follow. Anyone in here know Brene Brown? Raise your hand if you know Brene Brown when I say that name. Yeah, a few of you do. Brene Brown, you need to go home and look her up and you go listen to her TED Talk. That was the one that went viral. And she spells it B-R-E-N-E -E with a little, one of those little marks, Brene Brown. She is a social worker who is a professor and predominantly a researcher. And she did about 10 years of research on vulnerability when she had her own mental breakdown because she realized that she represented all the issues <laughs> of vulnerability. And she's really funny. You'll enjoy listening to her. But since then, she is known for talking about vulnerability, and she, her religion and her faith is extremely important to her. They are a part of who she is. And there's a couple of things that she shares that says that I want to share with you. I listened to a sermon she preached at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. She was invited there to preach. And one of the things she said to them is, she said, you, oh, by the way, she is, this sermon was in 2018. I want to make sure you understand it was in 2018, six years prior to today. And this is what she says. She says, one of the things that really scares me about our world right now is that we are putting ourselves in more and more divisions. And we are only putting ourselves in boxes and in divisions and in conversations with people who think like us and people who believe like us. And we're not willing to cross any borders. And she says, now, the thing that really scares me about that is, is this. When we begin, she says, first of all, if you do a study on loneliness, since we have all begun to put ourselves in our own camps, Whatever our camps are, and we could list a slew in here. It's not just political. It goes forever. There's all kinds of camps that we may find ourselves in. And she said, you would think when we got in our camp with people like us that we would be the happiest we've ever been. Actually, the studies are showing that we're the loneliest we've ever been. We are the loneliest we have ever been in our dividing and being amongst people with camps like us. And she said, I've actually come to believe that it's not so much that I like these people so much, it's just that we hate the same people. <laughs> and our hate of the same people is what brings us together. And she said, so this is what really scares me about our groups. The more we put people in groups, then the easier it is for me and my group to look at someone in your group, and if you're not in our group, it makes us easier to take away your humanity, to remove your humanity, because you think and believe what you believe, and at that point, when you are no longer seen as human in our eyes, we can, do, we can justify doing anything we want to to you. She said this six years ago. Once we lose our humanity and once we look at someone else and we start moving them beyond their humanity, then we say to ourselves, we don't realize we've taken them out of their humanity, but we allow ourselves to do anything we want to do to them and think that it's okay.
Now she says, I love, I love God. She says, I have a little fight with church, and you'll have to listen to her to say that. It's really funny. You'll enjoy it. She'll say like, you know, we'll say things like, be honest, be open, say everything, but don't cuss. You know, and so, you know, she, she's really, she, she'll really, you'll enjoy her when she talks about that. But she says there's three things about church that I love. Three things that I love. She's Episcopalian, and she was in this great big cathedral with lots of people. And she said, first of all, I love to sing with people I don't know. <laughs> Singing with people that I don't know helps me lift my voice in common with someone who may not be like me. And secondly, she says, I love, she's Episcopalian, I love that we all gather together at the rail. Now, for us, that means the table. We're all welcome. And in that moment, it doesn't matter which box we're in. We all come to the same table, and we all partake. And I'm trying to decide right this moment whether to tell you the third thing or to make you wait for it. <laughs> I'm going to make you wait for it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make you wait for the third thing she says. And then in another talk, she says, the opposite of belonging is fitting in. Whoa, think about that. Think about that. The opposite of belonging is fitting in. When we fit in, we are pretending to be something we are not in order to be accepted by the people around us. Amen. When we belong, we can be ourselves. Like friend to friend. We can be ourselves when we belong, and it doesn't matter, Ray, if you and I don't think the same way. It doesn't matter. I can still say what I want to say, and you can still say what you want to say, and we're good. He might change my mind. He might not. All right? Because we belong. We belong. It means if we have a difference of opinion or we're not at the same place theologically, when we belong, it's okay. Amen. When we belong together, I'm going to tell you another story and I'll come back to belong. Remind me, I'm coming back to belong. About 10 or 15 years ago, I said and started saying to churches, I don't know if I said this to you guys when I talked to you, but I started saying it. I started saying, I am not going to play church. I am tired of playing church. I didn't go to seminary to play church. And I will no longer pretend to be someone I'm not so that I can make you happy to play church. If you want to play church, I'm not the minister for you. If you want to be church, let's talk. Let's talk if you want to be church, because I don't want to pretend to be church anymore. And so when we belong, I don't have to pretend to be church up here. Amen. Yeah. I can put it out, and if you don't like it, it's okay. You still belong, and I still belong. Because we are in a diverse community that belongs. We're not fitting in here. We're in the work of belonging. Yes. It has never in the history of my life, and I'm getting old, 
It has never in the history of my life been any more important for us with our diversity in this room, in this church, to belong to one another than it is right now. As I told you, one of the first Sundays I was here, when we walk out those these doors, if we listen to what's going out on outside these doors, it will divide us. Amen. It doesn't have to. Jesus said, you are my friend, Chris. You are my friend, Lynn. Yes. You are my friend, Dot. You are my friend. And I love you, and you are enough just like you are. And like those disciples, it doesn't matter if we all have the same theology, if we all have exactly the same thoughts, if we're all in the same camp, it doesn't matter. Because we look at each other and we say, God loves you and therefore I love you because you are enough just like you are. Amen. God told me so. God told me that you are enough. Yes. And you know what? Some of those things we disagree with, I say, let God decide. I don't want to get in that mess. Amen. It's not my issue. Let God decide it. So, the third thing. The third thing she says to me is very powerful, and it's to me, it's always been one of the most powerful parts of a service. Uh, I understand you used to do it here and no longer did. Uh, Witterville used to do it and no longer does. And for me, it has always been one of the most powerful things that I have ever done. And one of the reasons it's one of the most powerful things that I have ever done is because I have done it with people with whom I have been in disagreement. And it is the passing of the peace. Amen. Because the third thing that we do in church that doesn't happen in the world, we sing together with strangers. We come to the table together with strangers. And then we look at one another and we hold your hand or give you a hug or whatever it is and we say with all of our heart to you who may think completely different than me, may the peace of God be with you. To me, it's humbling. I've had friends that were just dear, 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 and we came to a point of real disagreement and hurt over something, and to be able to go to that person and say, the peace of God be with you. You are enough, my friends. We don't have to be the same. <coughs> We don't have to be the same. God has called you friends. And God has said, you are enough just like you are. And so is the person sitting next to you. And so today, as a way of ending this and celebrating that we are a diverse community and we celebrate that community. And what are we praying together every day? Oh, good. Some people are praying it. God, help me love more today than yesterday. God, help me love more today than yesterday. If we will just pray that prayer, it will help us. It will help us love each other in all of our differences and to see each other through the eyes of God and to go out into the world and change the world. Change it. Not just hide in it. Change it with the kind of love that says to everyone we meet, you are 
enough and God said you were God's friend. So today for me, as we close, would you take a moment and turn to the person next to you and just say, may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ. Oh, it's all right. It's tricky, and I just didn't want it to come through. Yeah. the peace, I forgot to send an invitation. You are already part of this family. If you want to make it official, come see me, or come see an elder. Raise your hand. Elders, see an elder, see me. We can make it happen. If you want to come forward here, you are welcome to do so during our closing hymn, and we would love to welcome you officially into this family. Let's stand and sing our final song, I Will Follow, our song of invitation. So thank you, Miss Nancy. We got no piano. Wanna come down here? <laughs> We're gonna make it work somehow. <laughs> oh, I kinda like this. Okay. <laughs> Will you go or go? Will you stay or stay? When you Catherine and I say go out into the world in peace. Go out into the world in love.
Go out into the world in grace. Go out into the world and know that everyone you see is a friend of God and belongs to God's love. Go out into the world and make a difference, sharing that love wherever you go. Go in grace, go in peace. Amen. 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 and she'll let you know. She'll either turn her head or she'll say. You know, a lot of doors scare her. Uh, this is a lot for her. Yeah. But